me, Mr. Bradley, and today we're learning about rainforest plant adaptations. Right, so we're here in the rainforest on our way to find the ancient tree of Kuk Fung. Hmm. <laughs> Madge just asked if this was the tree. <laughs> what a shame! What a shame! The ancient tree, no. No, this is not the ancient tree. I hope this isn't the ancient tree. Tree, man. I'm rooting for you. One, two. <laughs> Due to the low levels of light in rainforests, leaves grow super duper big. Super duper. It's a little bit weird. Because of all of the bigger vegetation and plants blocking out all the light, leaves grow extra big, and that's so that they can absorb as much light as possible in these low light conditions holes in these leaves they actually look like the leaf has been hole punched and this is due to little bugs eating the leaf drama on the forest floor we have a mighty earthworm being devoured by ants the battle of the century To feel this, it actually feels like an umbrella or a raincoat, and that's because these leaves are super, super waxy. They're waxy so that all of the rain that lands on the leaf will just roll off it immediately. It makes it really waterproof. If it didn't have this waxy layer, the leaf would not be waterproof and it would stay wet for a long time, which is a big problem in something like a rainforest. Things like fungus, mold, or even rot could grow on this leaf, which would cause it to die and decay. Excuse me, ma'am. Do you have a moment to talk about some leaves? No, not. Don't leave, leave me alone. Don't leave me. Leave me alone. Don't leave me. <laughs> you might also notice that this plant is angled in a downward direction. That's no accident either. This is so that the water and the rain that falls onto the leaf will naturally roll off it to keep it nice and dry. If you also look at the rest of the plant, you'll notice that all of the leaves are positioned in different directions. And that's no accident either. That's an adaptation called leaf angling. And it means that each of these leaves are receiving the same amount of sunlight and not blocking each other out in a low light area, such as a rainforest. Come with me, we've just made a remarkable discovery. Behold. The giant Leafus plantus rexus. Exocillus rebelasicus flicus. Other plants like these ones, have massive leaves, but also have gaps between them. And the reason they have gaps between them is that the leaves don't get damaged. The arrow was pointing this way. We think the ancient tree is this way. We saw a big tree, but it could be getting hideously lost here. So now we're going deeper and deeper into the rainforest and you can see that it is much darker because we're shadowed or sheltered by all of the thick vegetation and trees and the upper canopy. When leaves fall down in rainforests, they'll obviously fall to the forest floor. But because there's so much life in a rainforest, so many living things, plants, bugs and fungus, those leaves get rotted away very, very quickly. And all of those nutrients are soaked up and eaten and digested by many living things. So nutrients don't last very long in the rainforest. Most of the soil in a rainforest are actually very low in nutrients, except for the very thin layer of rotting material on top. And that's the reason why roots have no business growing deep onto the ground. There's no nutrients there, so they'll stay on top. And these are a very special type of roots called 
buttress roots. I believe this is the moment we've all been waiting for. The first glimpse of the ancient tree of Kokfuan. Kokfuan? Kokfuan. Jesus, massive. What? Now for the butt wrist roots. Beneath me is a giant root. This is called a buttress root. <laughs> huh? Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> These are called the buttress roots. Grow up. Buttress roots are very common in rainforests, which is why I've fallen many times. Come with me. We have a beautiful liana right here. If this can support my weight, it must be incredibly strong. Lianas are thick, woody vines that attach themselves to trees by little sucker roots called tendrils in rainforests. They are rooted in the ground, but they will grow up, 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 up the tree until they reach the upper canopy where there is light. At the top in the upper canopy, they'll grow their leaves or flowers that will absorb sunlight for photosynthesis. But because they have roots in the ground, they're not actually harming the tree in any way. They're just using it as a means to get into the upper canopy. However, if there was no tree or the tree died, so would the lianas. They are dependent on host trees. I hope I can't like uh, jump. Okay. Well, get that away from me. Let him on me. This is like a, a stick insect of sorts. Let's put it up this way then. Woo! Woo! Okay. It's the most deadly animal known to man. Magella. <laughs> Behind me is a type of plant that we refer to as an epithyte. An epithyte is a plant that's roots grow on another tree, but they don't actually grow into the ground. So how does that work? Well, first of all, they get their moisture using specially designed leaves, like these big leaves up here, that will just absorb moisture from the air. The roots, however, because they're not going in the soil, need nutrients, but they get their nutrients from all of the leaves that collect into the little grooves and gaps and corners or where the branches come out of the big tree that they're on, the host tree. They are sometimes referred to as parasitic plants. This is because they cause damage to the host plant that they're growing on and can sometimes result in it even dying. And so we've come to the end of our video about rainforest plant adaptations. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and check out some of the other videos on my channel, such as desert plant adaptations or aquatic plant adaptations. And as always, thanks for watching. See you next time.